Welcome to the first edition of Coffee and Cases, the remote edition. So I'm here with John Slayer of 360 Bubble and Jerry Sutton of Incremental Engineering, who is a service provider who helps support John in creating his project. So John, can you introduce yourself? Tell me a bit about yourself and where you first got the idea for 360 Bubble. So I'm John Slayer. My background is largely underwater, scuba diving and so on. A lot of uh, underwater videography. Uh, I work also as a stuntman now, and uh, I do a lot of coral reef conservation work uh, alongside that. And uh, in amongst it all, I also run a small business, uh, 360 Bubble, which sells underwater housings for 360 cameras. So, what made you decide to yeah, go with 3D printing, and what made you decide to work together with Jerry? I was doing some work back in 2012 for Google Earth and Google Maps where the coral reef conservation work that I was doing at the time took me to some really remote uninhabited locations that weren't on Google Street View and they asked me if I could capture them while we were on these expeditions and on one of the trips they uh, said fine there's your 30 kilogram backpack and here's a, a camera that we've designed which, which can easily replace it. So I took this out with me and of course being a scuba diver and being near a coral reef the very first thing that I thought when I got that in my hand is Oof, yeah I see the photos this thing takes I'd really like to get this underwater on a coral reef and so we started a small business and here we are six six years later. At some point we realized the limitations of the kind of homegrown manufacturing processes that we were using and I went off to a trade show uh, I think I was looking for underwater USB cables and plastic parts manufacturers to see if we could make these parts a little bit more professionally and a little bit more customized to, to what we, we exactly needed. And one of the chaps I spoke to said, hey, why don't you, you know, Jerry's just around the corner at Incremental Engineering, why don't you give, go and give him, uh, have a word with him, I, I think he'll really be able to help you out. And yeah. Here we are, three and a half years later. 3D printing, because it, it really is quite specific what we need in terms of the, the you know, we've got several different uh, camera manufacturers that have come up with different designs based on the same outlay of two fisheye lenses back to back. But each of the cameras are different shapes, so every time one comes out, we need to adjust to a specific new model of camera. And it's just so much easier to do when you're 3D printing and you can just adjust the model in the software and then press print and get a completely new design printed without any different parts and so on. So Jerry, can you tell us a little bit more about how you worked with John to create this product and yeah, how were you able to support him in achieving his final product? Um, John, as John said, he came to me basically with a product um, and it was a nice product and it worked. Um, the, the reason I think John sought me out was it wasn't scalable in terms of manufacturing. Um, and so then we, we sat down and we had a long talk and we took the initial design and made it a little bit easier for the user to use and also hopefully John will agree a lot easier for him to make and put in a box and, and send out to his customers. What sort of finishing options were you looking at when creating the 360 bubble and what made you decide on the Dimension printer product workflow? John was the first customer I worked with where we actually had to look for finished product um, that is going into consumer hands so it, it was a real challenge. Um, also I think in terms of scalability, we were blasting everything manually. So when you have an HP part, it arrives snowy and covered in powdered nylon. You have to remove that, then you have to dye the part, then you have to polish it. And all of those things at, the, at that time were being done manually, which was not really scalable. So we, we looked around and the dimension workflow basically worked. Um, so we could go from these snowy parts through to final use consumer parts. You can see the 3D printed parts um, and uh, you know, with a, a nice optical hemisphere attached to it and yeah just just the process of, of designing all of this has taken uh, a lot of time but um, 
yeah, with um, with your polishing, dyeing and polishing process, you can see we've really got a fantastic finish to that. And um, that actually is our sealing surface. You need a good, clean, polished surface for an O-ring to sit on to actually keep the water up. And that's that's what we're getting out of these finished products. So what does the future hold then for you, John, and 360 Bubble? There's so many places that it could go. We really want to work this live streaming angle. I think that's got a lot of utility. You know, put it in a, an aquarium, like something like SeaWorld, where you've got fantastic habitats underwater. Watch all of that in real time. Yeah, seals, dolphins, coral reefs. There, there's so many things where you could place this in the water. I think our next step is to try and work out a version of this that we can actually take away from the buildings, away from the shore, drop it over the side in the open ocean. So you can actually stream wild marine habitat straight into people's homes. Well, John and Jerry, thank you so much for your time, for giving us some more insight into your product. Um, it was yeah, definitely very eye-opening and we look forward to seeing what 360 Bubble brings out in future. Fantastic. Thank you very much.